Hi everyone, I'm Yasha and welcome to the 13th episode of Election Scoop. Today we'll be discussing the results of the U.S. Senate election in Alabama. Against all odds, Democrat Doug Jones carried the day, beating Republican Roy Moore by 1.5%. Jones won primarily because of three things, write-ins, African Americans, and suburbs. First, let's start with the write-ins. It's worth noting that Jones didn't get a majority of the vote. He failed just under at 49.9% and Moore at 48.4%. Write-ins made up the remaining 1.7% of the vote, and many of these were pr probably conservative Republicans who did not want to vote for Moore. This scattering of the votes helped Jones get a head start, and then there are the African American voters. Driven by endorsements from Barack Obama, they flocked to the polls and voted for Jones by upwards of 95% and helped turn out more votes and turn out in the black belt, the area of the state that makes up the Democratic voter base. Indeed, Dallas County, which includes the historic city of Selma, was the area that finally put Jones over the top and secured his victory. And finally, there are the suburbs and other cities where Jones performed much better than other Democrats. And this is where Democrats need to improve if they want to do better in Alabama and deep southern states and all sorts of Republican areas. For example, in 2016, Donald Trump carried Mobile County by a fairly comfortable 14 points. Doug Jones won it in 2017 by 14 points, an exact 28 point difference. Jones also won Tuscaloosa County by 17 points, a major swing from Donald Trump's 19-point win. So what can we take away from this? Well, it gives Democrats a lot of hope going into 2018. Previously, there were only two pickup opportunities for Democrats, and around 10 for Republicans in the Senate. With 52 to 48 Republican majority, this meant that there was really no viable path to Democratic control. At best, they could tie, which, with Vice President Pence's vote, means a loss. Now that the Senate stands at 51 to 49, this means that the Democrats now have a game plan of what they need to do for the first time since the 2016 election. They need to win Arizona, and they need to win Nevada, taking back these states from Republicans. And they need to hold their ground on heavily Republican turf like West Virginia, North Dakota, and Montana, which all have Democratic senators up for re-election. And remember, one of the key factors in the race was that Jones, although receiving support from national Democrats like Cory Booker, was able to distance himself from the National Party and make it a race between him and Moore, instead of a race between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats have already been doing fairly well in special elections. In ruby-red districts like Kansas's 4th, Georgia's 6th, and South Carolina's 5th, they have well outperformed regular standards for the Democratic Party in those areas. And it rings true a quote by Tip O'Neill, former Speaker of the House. All politics is local. That's very important. When parties try to adopt a national strategy and deliver it to all levels of government going down, the results don't work in their favor. When they build ideas up, state by state, county by county, precinct by precinct, it gives them a much larger home advantage. Instead of making the race about Democrats coming into Alabama and winning, Doug Jones made the race about Democrats coming out of Alabama and onto the national stage, and that was a winning formula. With the 2018 elections on their way, it remains to be seen what party will best develop this strategy. We'll be coming at you with preliminary forecasts of what to expect, and then primaries will start, and we'll be covering notable events in those states' primaries, as well as giving you a shot of what to expect in that state, which includes what the dominant party has been doing right, and what the minority party needs to do to start fighting back. So thanks for watching, and remember, don't forget to vote.